Oh my god, this one has just been sold for almost $800,000. I mean, what the f***? This is just an image. Now, before I explain what's going on, let me begin this video with a short personal story. So when I was starting out in computer graphics during my time in college, I was known as the one who was trying to solve design problems using ZG. And I was sometimes also deprecatingly called the render guy by a professor of mine. She made a very clear distinction between what she considered as real art, uh, paintings, sculptures, installations, and pretty much everything else, including computer generated imageries, which she clearly did not accept it as real art. So this made me upset quite a bit because I knew how much time, how much passion and how much energy goes into creating a unique piece of work. And in my opinion, there wasn't that much of a difference between a classic painter or a classic uh, sculptor and the render guy, except the tools they use. So I did my research and oh boy, I found out she was totally right. Um, back then there was really no place for digital art. And by digital art, I really mean art for art's sake. So I do not talk about CG and the way it is used to create a product like a game or a movie. And it has been this way for the last 15 years. Now, I remember attending the Pictoplasma conference in Berlin um, as a visitor a few years ago. So that's one of the biggest platforms for contemporary character art and character design. They had an amazing lineup with all of these great artists. A few of them were pretty famous. Most of them already had a huge follower base online. And I had the opportunity to talk to a few of them after the speech. And I was surprised and to be honest, also a little bit shocked to find out how many of them were literally starving and struggling from a financial point of view, despite the fact how unique their work was. They were basically moving on from one low paid freelance gig to the next. And even though the community was celebrating their work, every new artwork in their portfolio had the sole purpose to land the next freelance gig. The artwork itself had no intrinsic value. And it's the absence of this intrinsic value that describes digital art very well. Actually, it's not only the absence, it's also the impossibility to literally charge a digital artwork with value. And this is simply impossible because it's not unique. And by uniqueness, I really mean that there does not exist an original. So once you create something and share it with the world, it gets duplicated and then it gets pretty much lost in the boundless wasteness of the internet. Of course, sometimes, it can be traced back to the creator, but the artwork itself was never unique. Take a physical painting, for instance. You can take pictures of this painting, you can share these pictures online, but you still have the physical original painting. The Mona Lisa describes this concept pretty well. It makes a huge difference if you have a photograph of the Mona Lisa or the artwork itself. One is pretty much worthless, while the other one is worth millions. Now, this concept has probably changed forever last December, December 2020, when the famous Mike Winkleman, AK Beeple, so that's the artist who creates a new digital artwork every day for the last 14 years, has sold a collection of his work on a marketplace called Nifty Gateway for unbelievable $3.5 million. And this was done through NFTs. So let me explain what NFTs are. NFT is short for non-fungible token, and it is the result of turning a digital asset, like a digital painting or an animation, into something that can be owned, collected, and traded like a physical object. Therefore, it has to be unique, it must be able to store the value of the asset, and it must be something that can be exchanged. The process of turning an asset into a token is called tokenization and it isn't limited to digital assets only. The token itself has no value as it only serves as a certificate. The actual value comes from the asset it represents. If you take a hundred dollar bill for example, the paper it is made of is pretty much worthless but it still retains value as it represents the purchasing power equal to the numbers printed on the paper. Before I continue, we need to clarify the concept behind three things. The first one is, what is value? Value can be objective or subjective. 
Everything we need to live like clean water and basic foods has an objective value as it is essential for every human being. Without it, we are not able to survive for very long. A subjective value on the other hand is different for every one of us. Some value certain things more than others. What is important to you doesn't have to be important to me. If you collect characters from the Marvel Universe, it's important to you, but it couldn't be less important to me. Now, wherever value exists for enough people, usually also a market exists. A market is a place where you can go to buy, sell, exchange and trade digital or physical assets. But what is an asset? An asset is the term that describes something useful or valuable. We can distinguish between physical assets like real estate, dollar notes or gold, digital assets like Bitcoin, Ethereum and the numbers on your bank account or even abstract assets like knowledge. The third thing we need to clarify is what does fungible and non-fungible mean? Fungibility means that an asset can be exchanged without losing its value. If you give me your $10 note and you take mine, we both still have $10. Fungible also means divisible. If I lend you a $10 note and you return two $5 notes, I'm perfectly fine with this as the value remains the same. Non-fungible on the other hand stands for an asset that cannot be simply exchanged with another one or easily divided without losing its value. One baseball card is not the same as another baseball card even if they are both printed on simple paper. And when I cut a baseball card into pieces, it becomes worthless. Now, how do we create fungible and non-fungible digital tokens with all of these characteristics? This is done through the help of the blockchain technology. So what is a blockchain? First of all, do not confuse Bitcoin with blockchain as Bitcoin is just one of many ways how the blockchain technology is used. The simplest explanation of blockchain is that it is a continuous record of data stored on a network of computers. And why is it called blockchain? Picture the pages of a ledger where each page contains not only newly recorded data, but also a brief summary of the previous page. If you change the content of the previous page, you also have to change the summary of the current page. This means all pages are linked or chained together. When you now switch the term page with block, you have a blockchain. The concept of the blockchain has some core attributes. The first one is, it is decentralized. It gets rid of a central authority that stores and possibly also manipulates or changes the data. When everyone keeps track of the records, it's impossible for a single authority to change it without getting noticed. The recording process is transparent because the way how data gets recorded is available for everyone to see. Again, nothing can be held back or manipulated by a single authority. And last but not least, it's secure. Once something is accepted in this database, it cannot be changed, altered or destroyed. This is achieved through cryptography. As we now know, a non-fungible token refers to a digital certificate stored in a blockchain. NFTs can be implemented into any blockchain that supports smart contracts, like Ethereum for example. Now, because an NFT is unique, secure, indivisible, exchangeable and it guarantees the ownership to the one who holds the token, it has the potential to change the art world in several different ways. It allows to tokenize a digital artwork and turn it into a unique asset. At the same time, it makes limited digital editions possible in the first place by creating multiple tokens. Forging becomes impossible as every artwork can be traced back to the creator and the creator can be compensated for future sales as this can be built into the certificate. This means that when an artwork gets traded, the artist gets a small percentage of every future sale. Even if the concept sounds pretty logic, the implementation is very complex. 
The good thing is there are already several different platforms out there that take care of this. You can currently participate in two ways as an artist or creator and as a collector or trader. Let's take a look at the OpenSea.io marketplace first. OpenSea is a marketplace for all sorts of digital goods like art, collectibles and gaming items. All of these assets are baked by the Ethereum blockchain. Anyone can buy and sell on this platform. And the assets are traded in exchange for the cryptocurrency Ether. So this means that you need to set up a wallet first, then turn fiat money into Ether and then you are ready to buy and sell assets. Of course, this is a whole other topic for a separate video. When I, for instance, click on this artwork here, I get the price in Ether, which is 4.8 Ether or close to $8,000. And when I scroll down to the bottom of the page, I can see a trading history. At the very bottom, the item was created. It was first listed for 5 Ether. It was already sold once and now it is listed again for 4.8 Ether. The second platform I want to show you is Nifty Gateway. This is where Beeple has sold a collection of his work last December and in contrast to OpenSea, everyone can buy but not everyone can sell art on Nifty Gateway. As an artist, you have to be invited by the platform to get listed. So currently only already well-known digital artists with a decent follower base are invited. Their work is offered for sale through events called drops and as you can see the next drop takes place in an hour and 30 minutes and then you are able to buy artworks by a handful of selected artists. If you participate in one of these auctions and if you buy a piece of work it gets transferred into your profile. I have recently bought one from Peter Tarker, this one here. It was the number 9 of a limited edition consisting of 41 pieces. I paid $350 for this artwork and I'm currently trying to sell it for a pretty ridiculous amount of $10,000. And because this price is out of reach, I will probably keep it in my portfolio for the next few months or even years and observe how the uh, demand and how the price develops. I hope I was able to give you an overview of this very, very interesting but complex topic. If you have any additional questions, leave them in the comment section below this video. Thumbs up if you like the content, subscribe to my channel and see you in the next one.